Joel chapter 2. I know who they are. Joel chapter 2 says a large and mighty army comes. They're preparing. It's already forming. Vostok, 2018, October. Russia and China, 300,000 troops engaged in military war games. Oh my goodness, I saw it. I saw videos of it. There's things happening around the world we're not being informed about. I know who we're, who we're going to be dealing with. It's the, the global government. The global government is the international bankers. They have control of the money. They have their triangle, the pyramid, on our $1 bill with the eye on the top. It's Satan himself. These people have a one world government in mind and the United States has to be destroyed in order for them to have a one world government. This is who the real enemy is. It's, it's a spiritual war, you know. It's between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But the kingdom of darkness is rising up right now. And you know what? I have a booklet I wrote. It's called uh, War or Peace. I have a website. I've, I've tried to do a lot of things. I've tried to make a, a YouTube channel. I'm not too good at this kind of stuff. I am learning and trying to get better. But um, they tell me you got to keep it under five minutes. I go, you know what? I can't say nothing in five minutes. This is a long story, but it's all true. And every bit of it connects with logic. And so it gets down to knowing this. You need to be stockpiling the food. Henry Kissinger had a simple quote that he was famous for. Control the oil, control the nations, control the food, control the people. We don't want to be controlled. We're free people. In fact, we're the last of the free people on the planet. <clears throat> They're trying to disarm us. There's been a war being waged against the United States all our lives. But they work in a covert, under-the-table manner. They're behind the free trade agreement. They're trying to weaken this country. It all makes sense when you listen to a speech by Paul Warburg, a banker, a long time ago. He said, global government's coming. You're going to have a global government. It's coming whether you like it or not. It's going to happen one way or the other, either by consent, join them, go along with it, or by conquest. Well, the conquest of our country is what they've been working on for decades. They were behind the free trade agreement that Ross Perot called a great sucking sound leaving our country, all the jobs they'd be leaving. I realized that when I heard, read a statement about World War II, it said the primary reason the United States prevailed over our enemies in World War II was at the beginning of World War II, this nation already had in place a powerful industrial base. We could make everything. We made Mack trucks, Peterbilt trucks, Kenworth trucks, Freightliner trucks. We made tractors, Massey Ferguson's, Alice Chalmers, Case tractors, John Deere tractors, Caterpillar tractors. But when we got attacked, that industrial base instantly began to mass produce all the necessary military equipment with which we were able to destroy the enemies. They've been conniving. They've been studying our, our nation, the, the global elite. And they knew that industrial base has got to go. And that's how they came up with that free trade agreement. They've been behind everything they can do to weaken us economically. They're behind the spotted owl, a desert tortoise, a ridiculous FEMA or F. Uh, uh, EPA regulations, anything to hamper and stop us from thriving economically. A strong economy. Uh, uh, they don't want us to have more Americans. They're trying to reduce our population. They've been constantly promoting abortion and homosexuality. They're trying to reduce the population of our country. We are the biggest problem these globalists have. And they've been conspiring to destroy the United States. There's a speech by Obama at a White House Correspondents' Dinner where he makes a statement and all these media people that are on his team, they all laugh and he says, the end of the Republic has never looked better. Oh, really? This is the Republic for which we stand. We pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and to the Republic. For He'd been working, he comes out and openly vocalizes his true colors. He's a wicked, wicked man. Not to mention uh, a guy named Jonathan Kleck, who has a channel. 
and a lot more viewers than I got. I don't, I'm kind of envious of him, but uh, he's got the same heavy burden I got that we got to tell people what's going to happen. But nobody, nobody understands the when like I do. I know when. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 24, no man knows the day or the hour. But time is measured in increments, and I'm going to tell you the when. It's in the Bible in different ways and in different places. One is in Matthew 24, where the disciples came to Jesus privately and they said, tell us when will be the sign of your return, the end of the age. So Jesus answers in that chapter later. He says, watch for the branches on the fig tree to become tender and the leaves to come out. He says, by this you know summer's near, even so. When, oh, there's the word when. When you see these things, behold, it's at the door. At the door means right away. So when summer's near, it's close. I know, I know, know so much, it all fits together with logic. It's in Joel chapter 1. Joel chapter 1 is describing the same thing. Fig tree has leaves that wither. Well, the leaves had to come out. Joel chapter 1 says the farmers will be grieving over the loss of wheat and barley, that the crops out in the field have been destroyed. I go, that's the Daniel 9-11 talking about the curses written in the book of Moses, which is Deuteronomy 28-24, where it says there, a nation that turns away from the Lord will suffer these curses will come upon them. Their land will be cursed. The Lord will turn the rain of their land into dust and powder. It'll come down from the skies until it's ruined. I go, at first I go, can that be talking about fallout dust? Could that like, could like be radiation, contamination of crops? I backed up to see the preceding context. The verse right before it says, And the Lord will smite them with a wasting disease, with fever, inflammation, scorching heat and drought and blight and mildew, sores, boils, tumors, from which they cannot be cured. I go, wow. I sound like a dead ringer for radiation sickness. I looked it up on the internet. Hey, there's no cure. I got a Geiger counter. I try to be prepared. Uh, bo sores and boils and stuff. And maybe we should collect some uh, extra supplies of uh, Neosporin ointment or something. I don't know. But uh, I'm a prepper. I'm totally prepared. And because uh, I understand another when. It's in Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33 says, Woe to the destroyer who's never been destroyed. It says, when it stops destroying, it'll be destroyed. Really? Well, there's a when there. You're talking about when will... And I go, and later in that chapter, it says, brave men cry aloud in the streets. The envoys of peace weep bitterly. It says, highways are deserted. There's no travelers on the road. The treaty has been broken. I go, wow, we're, we're watching this stuff happen. In our present day world right now, Isaiah 33 is so happening. It's telling us when. And it, you better listen if you want to pay attention to the Word of God and know when. All you have to do is read it. Process the information like I've done. Who's the destroyer for number one? Well, the day I came home with a broken left arm, left leg, that day just happened to be the beginning of the bombing of Yugoslavia. I have nowhere to go. I lay in my house and watched for 78 days in a row, nonstop, 24-hour bombing campaign of the country of Yugoslavia. 400 sorties or jet loads of bombs every day. 31,000 jet loads of bombs. I go, Oh my goodness, why are we bombing Yugoslavia? You know what President Clinton said in a, in a national presidential address to the nation? He says, I have a moral obligation. He says, my morals compel me to go do something about Milosevic. He committed atrocities on his own people. Like, what a bad, nasty man he is. We have to do something about I go, his morals? Why are we bombing Yugoslavia? Oh, it's because of President Clinton's morals. Yeah, that's why. Oh, did you, did you know that right before the bombing of Yugoslavia began, he was caught with his pants down in the White House with Monica Lewinsky and, the, and all the, the major media, the cameras were focusing on talking about that. But suddenly, the commander-in-chief, he, he looks around the world and goes, oh, well, we need to create a, a, a diversion of the nation's attention, get him off of something besides his crotch. Wow. And it worked. But... 700,000 refugees were collecting in nearby Kosovo. 
the Russian leader Yeltsin at the time, I'm watching the news every day, I got nowhere to go, read my Bible, watch the news. He said, Mr. Clinton better be careful. He'll be able to rekindle the Cold War, if not a hot one. They bombed the Chinese embassy. The Chinese were furious. It was just crazy. So, but in the end, we're back to the question Isaiah 33. It says, what of the destroyer who's never been destroyed? Go, who has more destructive capability than the military of the United States? And uh, the destruction that we have been capable of causing, for example, like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, I mean, there's no other entity on planet Earth that approaches anywhere close to causing as much destruction as this country has caused. Bombing of Iraq, bombing of Libya, bombing of Syria. Anyway, it says when the destroyer stops, so guess who? Guess what, President Trump, I love the man, love him dearly, pray for him. But you know what, a year ago, last January, he announced he wants to bring the troops home, that the war on terror is over, that uh, I've got some videos about this. You can keep watching my channel. You're, you'll see them because um, Senator Mark Rubio, he now he goes, I don't know who, who advised this, but it is a terrible mistake. Same time, the, the Secretary of Defense, uh, General, uh, they call him Mad Dog Mattis, I listened to an interview that he announced uh, as he's being interviewed. He goes, he goes, I believe it's the right thing for me to do is to resign because uh, I believe the president does need a man in my position who is in more alignment with the president on his points of view, which he's wanting to, to quit the war on And I don't blame him. We have no business to be in over there. I would support it completely. But there is this one prophecy in the Word of God that says, when the destroyer stops, he'll be destroyed. And says, woe to the betrayer. He's never been betrayed. When he stopped betraying, he'll be betrayed. A betrayal's coming. Now, I mentioned this guy on a, has a YouTube channel called Jonathan Kleck, and he talks about the red wedding with Obama at another White House correspondence dinner. Oh, my goodness, the red wedding is sudden disaster. It's, like, it's almost like a perfect description of the coming day of the Lord called a total disaster coming. The red wedding's from the Game of Thrones. It says a carefully planned betrayal. That's in Isaiah 33, the betrayal. You know, they're, they're going to maybe play along like they're going along with President Trump and China and trying to fix the economic trade uh, issues in North Korea and, and Putin. Russia now has hypersonic nuclear missiles. Over 20 times the speed of sound. Putin's making presidential, Russian presidential addresses saying nothing could stop us now. They're unstoppable. They're so fast, nothing can stop them. And there's no, no missile defense system capable. And I go, Putin is, it's, it's the armies from the north. They're described in Joel chapter 2. It says it's the northern army. It's described in Jeremiah chapter 1. It says they'll fight against you, but they'll not overcome you. The Lord's coming to rescue us. Ezekiel 38 describes them. They devise an evil scheme to attack my people Israel. This is a huge, huge point. The prophecies are not about the place Israel. They're about the people Israel. It says it right in Ezekiel 38. And it also says they will attack peaceful, unsuspecting people living in cities without walls, gates, or bars. And that description alone disqualifies modern Israel because Jerusalem has completed 40 miles of 20-foot high concrete wall completely encompasses the outer perimeter of the city. And so they dwell in peace. Well, modern Jerusalem built that wall because of the suicide bombers, the terrorist attacks, and the hostility in the center of the Middle East conflict is Israel. And not, a, not exactly have a reputation of being a country at peace, okay? So once you understand it's the people Israel, these prophecies you're talking about, and, and then the question arises, well, who is that? And the, and the answer is in the promise God gave to Abraham, is that I will make you father of many nations. Your descendants will number like the stars in the sky, the sand on the seashore. Many nations. It's basically the NATO alliance. Other, other information which I have gathered is a site called deagle.com, D-E-A-G-E-L. 
It's a United Nations international website used by the CIA, the uh, different governments of the world. It has complete inventory of all the military equipment, the, the air, the land, the sea, the gross national product, the, the population forecast for 2025 in most of the NATO countries are suffering a massive depopulation, which happens to line up with Ezekiel 5. A third of the people perish in the city of the famine plague. Another third of them perish in the country by the sword. Of the third who survive are in the mountains. So there's, there's so much happening in our present modern day world that these Bible prophecies are describing. It is alarming, but not to worry. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not walk. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. You know, we have nothing to fear. It says, fear not them that can kill the body. Fear him who can kill the soul. We can walk through the valley of the shadow of death of fear no evil. The Lord is with us. Death is, has nothing to hold over us. In fact, it's a promotion. Paul said it. It's better for me to die than to remain, but better for you that I remain. For to be absent from this body is to immediately be in the presence of the Lord. I mean, who's anybody got a problem with that? I don't. But I want to be here doing my job as long as the Lord wants me to serve Him and do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do it. And so blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is actually coming in Revelation 19.11. He's coming to save us from our enemies. Look it up. It's in Luke chapter 1 and Zechariah's song. The man was has his wife is pregnant, and for nine months he can't speak a single word. He's mute. But it says the Holy Spirit loosens his tongue, he opens his mouth, and he prophesies, and he says, The one the coming, the one coming is going to be born. He's going to come and save his people from their enemies, and save them from all those who hate them. And he will come and save them from their sins and give them the knowledge